name is Phil Meese, and today I want to cover um, uh, a software called the Little Giant Control Center. Uh, and it's used to program probably what I would consider the most powerful MIDI control on the market today, uh, the Gradius Little Giant. And I haven't found any tutorial videos out there uh, outside the Axe FX world, so I figured I'd, I'd jump in and um, you know contribute and uh, hopefully demystify some of this. Uh, uh, some of the setup of this guy. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Uh, the first thing is this global setup tab, uh, and under here you have multiple sub tabs. Uh, board layout. Uh, this selects a unit you actually have. Um, you can have the, just the module. Uh, I have the regular LG2, which is the medium sized uh, par adjusted right little giant. And then you can have the big mama down here, um, and uh, you know whatever you have. Uh, if you plug in a slave controller, you can expand the amount of buttons and expression pedals you have on the unit. Uh, I don't actually have anything else plugged in. Uh, but I do have some external switches plugged in uh, through this aux box. And down here, uh, we'll talk about this later, this is kind of my connectivity matrix. This little aux box I have plugged in there. And uh, what that does is it allows you to use some extra physical switches in addition to whatever's on uh, what's on the Gordius uh, natively. Uh, and here you select what they are used for. You can have them as up-down bank selectors, you can have them as direct indexing switch, or I use them as external presets. So you enable it there. How many expression pedals you have plugged in all the way from 0 to 4? I use 1, so let's put 1 there. Um, and then the next sub tab, LEDs and metronome. Uh, the only thing really notable in here uh, is pretty much this uh, the dim LED state, or if you find the LEDs are too bright, you can dim them all here. Um, and so uh, I leave them at full blast. Um, I don't know if maybe the blue ones, blue, blue is always a little brighter, those, uh, the output of those, so maybe those guys have to dim it. Next sub tab, user interface. Um, there's a couple things in here I want to talk about. Uh, when reaching last bank, this option uh, is how the bank uh, acts when you hit the last one. So say your last bank was 9. Uh, if you had stick to the last bank enabled, it hit 9. If you keep hitting the up button, it'll just, it won't do anything. It won't, it won't go past 9. Uh, or roll around and you know if you have go back to first bank when you hit nine you hit the up button one more time and go back to bank one and up and down and the same is true for the reversed order um, I always have uh, menu knob lock activated uh, enabled um, because it's actually pretty easy to accidentally uh, hit hit with your foot the little encoder uh, button in the center there so I just leave that locked and uh, honestly I don't program the Gordias in menu it's it's too too much stuff to have to use just one encoder and uh, I mean it's really designed to use the control center so we're not even going to bother uh, having that unlocked or even talking about in menu programming. Program change can display range this is awesome because some uh, synthesizers and whatnot um, they want to see their PC start at 000 some want to see it at uh, 1 so I mean uh, depending on your synth um, you would select the appropriate option there it's not really going to affect anything other than uh, masking the last or first one and you'll be off by one digit uh, when you're ready each so uh, that's again you know uh, depending on what you're using the thing the control says uh, we can skip over this tab we don't really need to play with anything here uh, unless you want some elaborate filtering but we're not going to talk about it in the overview uh, so the next tab is variables and down here you pretty much just want to name um, all of the devices you have uh, this thing controlling and I have three and just type it in here it makes your life a lot easier later uh, you can specify what channel each is on and whatnot uh, miscellany Couple things in here we can uh, we can use. Uh, first one is don't select same patch twice. This is actually pretty useful. Again, it kind of depends on a specific uh, specific setup uh, you may have, um, but I found it quite useful sometimes. I you know some things you don't want to reset if you hit the button again, uh, so you can you can do that there. Uh, stomp box behavior. This is if you want to have your your Gordius unit operate like they were each each individual button was a stomp box. I don't use it like that. I, f I find it's more powerful if you don't. Uh, you know, just make patches because this thing can store so many patches and presets. Um, but if you wanted to have a uh, uh, true stomp box behavior, some programs um, require uh, different types of enabling. You know, some just a momentary action, some a toggle action. Uh, one of those is guitar rig. Um, and so if you're using guitar rig in stomp box mode, use, make sure this is enabled, otherwise it won't toggle properly. Uh, and, and generally that has to be in a, a cleared state when you first start. Uh, the LG switch uh, 9 and 10, um, you can actually make these whatever you want. Uh, I leave them as preset switches, but if you wanted to use those specifically as direct banks to index far-reaching patches, uh, you can do that there. Uh, and that's it for the global setup. Uh, next is pedal setup. Uh, we'll talk about this in more detail later. Uh, this is where you set up expression pedal, uh, expression pedals, and uh, you can calibrate um, uh, those as well with different curves. 
Uh, this is also where you can test and set up how your uh, external switches are wired. Uh, next, are the, probably the most important things are patch setup and preset setup. And uh, when I first read the manual, it's kind of weird because these are kind of, uh, you know, outside the Gradius world, uh, these are kind of interchangeable terms. And um, in the Gradius world, uh, you quickly realize that they're not. And if you don't realize that, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, so I, f I figure it's a good point to describe the differences here. Uh, patch setup is the is the, the core building block of everything, uh, as far as you know, sending MIDI messages and say, uh, you know setting up uh, program changes and node on offs and whatnot. Um, and then you have the uh, preset, which is uh, a, you know a higher level uh, setup uh, that can include multiple patches or a single patch if so be, uh, how you can sequence through them, whether it be sequentially or send them all at once. Um, and then you can, it also includes um, the expression pedal setups uh, as well. So um, everything you enable in the banks is technically a, pat, a preset setup. And the preset setup may just happen to be a one-to-one -one, uh, in the most uh, bare sense where, uh, you know, preset, you know, one, let's call it, might just only have patch one. Uh, as the main patch over here and as this looks right here it might be this is essentially the simplest you could possibly have um, but you have to have it in the patch pre setup first and so this is where you start and this is the each patch sends the the appropriate uh, program change messages down here so you can hit the plus icon and add them and we'll get into more detail how to do that all later uh, but again they are different things um, just remember the patch is kind of a smaller building block uh, that you need to set up first and then you set up a preset which again can include multiple patches as well as uh, expression pedal setups uh, so please just remember that uh, then you have the bank tab uh, right now I have it looks like just four banks I just throw in there um, you can add and remove them down here um, and so without anything when you first open the program you'll have these three here and the only one I find worth talking about is the global uh, and this means that uh, whatever switch here you selected under, um, you know, you right click and you can add a particular preset. Um, that is applied through whatever bank you, you happen to be on, any user bank. Uh, and what that does is it'll it'll make sure that that is always there. And I find it useful for uh, like tap tempo. I want tap tempo capability on any single bank. And uh, if that's the case, then I might also make it a global setup and put the tap tempo in maybe cell eight or four or something like that. Um, and that switch always is tied to tap tempo. Uh, that's pretty much bank setup. Uh, song setup is actually just a more uh, kind of organizational bank setup uh, in a way. Um, all it really does is allows you to retitle banks um, in a way that um, makes sense for a particular song. Uh, but the real power is when you can take those songs or banks um, and reorganize them in a way that matches your set list. So you can have multiple set lists here and you would just select what set list you're playing for that particular night uh, and it'll scroll through uh, the songs you know, per bank. So uh, that's pretty handy. Uh, communication is where you set up connectivity. Uh, when you plug in the Gordius via USB, uh, these two drop downs here, uh, you know, after the uh, operating system has scanned for the MIDI devices, you can also refresh here. Uh, again, I don't have anything plugged in right now, but what you want to do is there's a drop down here, and it's always usually like MIDI device 3 or USB audio device 3. Both of these have to be that same uh, audio device, uh, MIDI audio device 3. Um, and if they're not, it won't connect. So just please keep that in mind. Uh, and then you'll hit the connect a little giant. And these two buttons over here um, are actually the same thing. Uh, again, I don't have anything plugged in, so it's going to be a big fat X. If it were plugged in, this would just be a solid black line. Um, and then you have some just info about the unit down here um, uh, that you can look at. MIDI monitor for debugging. Uh, it's pretty useful if you want to read incoming MIDI messages and things like that. Um, to check things and, and who knows what. Um, quick dump up here, uh, this little arrow icon, uh, when you connect, you can hit that button um, and it'll download your actual setup, the whole all what you just programmed here to the, the Gordius Little Giant. Um, it takes a couple seconds uh, and it's a nice accessible button. If you're in any of these working, um, you know you can just click that right there and check it uh, in, in the, uh, the real world there and make sure it works. Uh, so that's all I really want to cover um, for an overview of the control center. Uh, next, we'll get into actually creating a, a, an elaborate setup uh, and you know doing something with it. So, uh, catch you in the next vid.